What's up, everybody? I got bedhead, bedbeard. It is almost seven. Might be some background noise. I've got uh, Lord of the Rings Online going for some ambience um, in the background. Welcome to the latest episode of Monday Musings. We are moving right along. If this is your first time tuning into this show. We is my personal blog space where I just sort of chat about life and everything. What Chris and I are up to, um, gaming stuff, books, films, other stuff. You know, we do a lot of I do a lot of different things on your YouTube. But this is my just where I ramble for 30, 45 minutes. Mm. Adjusting to life in the countryside away from the big city. What is going on with my hair? I need a haircut is what it comes down to. Um, I got a cup of coffee. I need to wake up. I've been up since about 6.30, but the first 30 minutes were um, playing cat dad. So, chucking cat poop out and filling up the box with fresh dirt. That's the one nice thing about having a big backyard is we can just use dirt. I don't have to buy sand or anything like that. And theoretically, theoretically, you can use cat poop for fertilizer for some things. Some people, there's mixed opinions on whether or not you can use it for a garden because of parasites and other things. Um, but whatever, it's nature. People who think cow poop doesn't have parasites in it don't know what they're talking about. That's why you deep deworm your your animals, and they still get worms in it after the fact. So I did that, fed the cats. Chris is still in bed. Pre-recording this on a Sunday morning. So te okay, this is April 10th when I'm recording this, even though it comes out on the 11th. Uh, this past week was a little crazy. We have been adjusting. I think the biggest adjustment is... There's two, actually. One is adjusting to not having fiber optic internet. That's That's been a trip. Because um, I forgot that cable internet has throttling and or saturation issues in the evenings. It's throttling. Um, they switched our line the other day. Um, after like three weeks, I think. The first connection I had for like three weeks. Um, the first first like week and a half, I used it every day. Streaming day and night. Zero problems. All weekend, no problems. The second weekend, on a Saturday, they throttled me. From like, I say they throttled me. Other people might disagree, but from 3 p.m. on Saturday up until midnight, um, I was locked at a 1.5 megabyte upload. Like they were like, "Nope, you're not. We're not letting you stream." My downloads were still fine, but I was locked. Couldn't stream anything. They just literally took my my upload speed went from here and went mm -hmm, down to 1.5 megabytes, which you can't do anything with that. And the fact that it's a hard cap like that lets me know that it's not saturation, because with saturation it'll fluctuate. Continued going onwards. The following weekend, which was this past weekend, not not the weekend before this, not the weekend of the 10th, but the weekend of the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Um, Friday night rolled around, and at 7.30, like clockwork, I watched everything tank. Saturday night, 7.30, everything tanked. Sunday night, 7.30, everything tanked. Same thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7.30, everything tanked. I could stream all day up until 7.30, and at 7.30 it tanked. On the 8th, I woke up and appeared to have a new, different connection because my speeds were different. I had a better upload same download but a better upload and I was like okay that's interesting 
Um, so Chris went in and paid the bill and, and every other stuff. So on the, on the day of the 8th, which was a Friday, I didn't stream at all that day. I said, new day, new connection, new billing. Not going to stream. See what it's like. Didn't stream all day. Friday night rolls around. 7.30 hits. No throttling. Everything worked all night. Max speeds all night long. I checked 30, 40 times. I was just sitting here working, and every 5, 10 minutes, I would go check. Saturday rolls around, and I'm like, we're going to test this. So Saturday, I, sh I uploaded three videos, and I streamed from about 2 o'clock in the afternoon until about 6 o'clock in the evening. Then I went and took a break, came back to play Minecraft with my brother at 7.30, as soon as 7.30 hit, I watched everything tank. Everything just went whomp, right back down to the 1.5 upload cap. Downloads fluctuating. Okay, that's normal. But that upload does not fluctuate. It goes whomp, and is locked at 1.5 mega. So they are absolutely throttling me for on an unlimited plan at nights. It is what it is. Um, it doesn't affect me other than Sunday nights, which are our tabletop streams. Thankfully, we have a backup in place for Sunday night streams for the tabletop stuff. Um, and it is a temporary solution, but it's going to work for now. And we have long-term solutions that we're looking into that we should be able to get up and running within the next few weeks. I mean, by, by May, we should be able to have those up and running. Um. So, yeah. Fun times, getting used to that in the countryside. Because I'd forgotten about cable internet and them, and their quote-unquote unlimited packets that aren't actually unlimited because they have fair use policies buried in there. By the way, there's no fair use policy in my contract at all. I, I've dug through that thing 20 different times. I've Googled everything with the company. They don't have any fair use policy, but they absolutely appear to have something behind the scenes that says when... This one dude over here who's, who's streaming all day, using up like, you know, 30, 40 gigs a day of data. We're we're gonna we're gonna cap him because he's he's burning up all the bandwidth for the town. The other small town thing that I've ha that we're having to get used to is um, power infrastructure issues. Uh, we had a heat wave come through this past week like Monday, Tuesday, well, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, basically. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Because by Thursday, it ra started to rain and it cooled down. It's been really nice. Thursday and Friday were like 75, 80 degrees. Um, I think today it's going to get a little hotter. Um, today being the day I record this. Um, let me look at the weather today, actually. Today it's going to get up. Yeah, today it's warming up again. Today it's going to be 88 degrees. So Thursday it cooled down. Friday it was really nice. Yesterday it was really nice. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday it was like 100, 103 degrees. With the heat index of like 115. And uh, this whole region, not just our town, the whole region, everyone is suffering from the heat. So everyone's just running air conditioners and everything 24-7. And had we had multiple power failures, um, not just us, the people in the big city that's near here, two hours away. They had like 28 districts without power for like 12 hours, um, just because the power grid is is it's less of an issue with the power grid than it is um, with other things, which we'll dive into. By the way, this this morning stream sounds like I'm just bitching and moaning about everything. I'm not. It's things I have to adjust to now that we're out in the countryside. Um, that is a big mosquito. Like mosquitoes, those are things I have to get used to. There were mosquitoes in the city, but not as um, prevalent because it doesn't get that warm in Mexico City all the time. Anyway, um, power issues, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Our power went out every night, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Every night. Monday night it went out at 11, came back on at, at 1 a.m. Then... Tuesday night it went out at 2 a.m. and was out until 1 p.m. So almost 12 hours we had no power. And then Wednesday, 
Wednesday, I literally sat down at my desk and was sitting down to do the stand-up with my brother, and I, I literally hit send on my phone to send my text message, and the power went out. From 9 to 11, the power was out, and then we went to bed, and at, at uh, 3 a.m., power went out again, and was back up by 10. Um, Thursday, it cooled down. No power outages since then. Oh, I take that back. I'm, I'm not. That's not true. Thursday morning, uh, the power went out. Thursday being Friday. One of those days, it also went out again uh, for a separate, some other things. So it was like three, four nights in a row the power went out. Um, the longest being a 12-hour stretch, and the shortest being two hours. Um, I think most of those were like two to four hours the power was out, um, and then that long stretch was from 1 a.m. until you know, or 2 a.m. until 1 p.m. the next day. So that's just a reality of living out here. Apparently, uh, we were told by the neighbors that anytime it gets hot like that, uh, the power will go out um, because everyone and their brothers running their air conditioning units and the power grid fails. However, I'll tell you why it's not the power grid per se. It is the power grid, but it's not the power grid. The way things are done here a lot of stuff just isn't regulated. So if you can imagine there's a transformer, you know, and it's built to support X amount of power. And so, you know, everybody gets a meter installed on their house. And, you know, this, it, it's all supposed to be regulated through meters and, you know, connections done through the power company. What a lot of people do is, because everybody and their brother's an electrician, or knows an electrician. So what a lot of people will do because they don't want to pay an electric bill is they will just they'll literally get a ladder and shimmy up the post and and wire in directly, which is super dangerous, but people do it anyway. Um, and they will do things like that so that they can have an air conditioning unit that's running but not registering that it's running. But this also puts an unnatural draw, as far as I understand things, I could be wrong, but as far as I understand things, this puts an unnatural draw on the existing power lines because they think that they're pulling this much power and that there's this many devices and this many houses running to it, when in reality there are three or four times that amount <laughs> pulling power from these cables. And as a result, all your junction boxes and breakers and all the things that are set up to trip when there's too much juice being pulled or when there's failure so on and so forth that's what happens is, is shit just gets tripped all the time um, when it's hot out because too many people are connected to a circuit that's not you know to a, to a grid that's not meant to support that many people or not many people but that many devices it's a, it's 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 the countryside man and you can't say it's just Mexico because I, I grew up in Missouri and Arkansas, Oklahoma, those areas. People do this shit all the time in the United States as well. Um, it's just a little harder to get away with it out there because everything's regulated so strictly that you can't it, you can't do things these days like you used to be able to do 20, 30 years ago. But it's there's you can still do get away with a lot of stuff if you know how to do electrical work and things of that nature. So we have been looking at, it's not going to happen right away, but like we're going to need to get a generator, probably. Um, not one wired to the house, but like a, a backup generator that I can plug my um, computers into, a fan, and the fridge. That way if we have the power go out, you know, I've got a generator that can run for 12 hours. Uh, the neighbors have said it, it's been only a handful of times over like 20 years has the power ever gone out for more than like 12 hours. Um, there's been a couple of times when there's been like bad storms when the power will be down for like two days because they just got to repair lines and stuff. And that happens in the States all the time. I grew up in Missouri again, Tornado Alley. My uncle works for the line company. And just when it, when it, when there's tornadoes to get through or big thunderstorms that rip trees up and knock them down over a over a big section of line. I mean, that might take two days to get fixed. So it is what it is. But um, we're looking into getting a, a generator, perhaps. Definitely want to get solar installed um, because this area has sun like 300 and 
it's like 300 and some days at it. It's like the, May is the rainy month. Um, but the rest of the year it's sun for the most part. So it's it's like something like three. I would have to do a, a another check, but I remember looking at it a couple weeks ago because my brother and I were talking about it. It's like 320 days of sun per year. So I got more than enough sun to run solar panels. So more than likely the long-term solution here is going to be getting solar panels installed and then um, getting enough batteries to support, you know, 24 hours of, of power failure. I don't know that I would need more than 24 hours. I mean, it might be nice to have a, a battery bank that could give me 72 hours worth of power, but I don't foresee a scenario where we're not going to have sun. For, I mean, there are times when it rains, but the, the reality of the power being out while it's raining for three days in a row are very unlikely. Um, so I would probably be okay with like a 24 hour battery bank. That's expensive. So that's a, that's a long term. That's a long term one. But that's something we're looking at short term as a generator so that if we if we continue to see power outages during these hot hot season because April and May are the hottest months out of the year. So I guarantee you, I guarantee you there's going to be more power outages throughout the month of April into May um, until the rainy season starts. Once the rainy season starts, it cools down for a bit. And then when it comes back, when we go out of the rainy season, it cools down significantly. It's still hot, but not 100 plus hot. It's 90 you know, so things I'm learning about moving out to the countryside here in, in southern Mexico. Chris was telling me stories about when she grew up, like they didn't have, you know, nobody had air conditioners and they would sleep on the roof because it was, that's the only place where it was cool enough to be able to sleep because it was just too damn hot inside. Um, so everybody would just sleep out on the roof, rooftops. Which is also why everyone uses hammocks here, because it's it's cooler than sleeping. On, and I never I never thought about that, but sleeping on a mattress, your half one half of your body, whether it's face down or back down, one half of your body is is not breathing. It's literally stuck there, and you're not getting any sort of airflow. And that's one of the reasons everybody sleeps with hammocks out here, because you you're not restricting the airflow around your body, which means it's cooler when you sleep. Food for thought. I have tried sleeping in a hammock and I cannot. I can I can nap in a hammock. I can't get a good night's sleep. I've tried and it, I'm just I'm not used to it. Maybe that's something that'll come with time. But I'm not used to it. Not yet anyway. <sighs> We're waiting to see if the cat is pregnant. We're 90% sure she was pregnant when you know we're 90% sure she's pregnant she had her babies we're estimating six weeks they haven't quit nursing yet their eyes are slowly changing color they're not completely changed yet um, but they're getting close to being yellow but they're still kind of blue green um, one of them is blue green and the other one is like blue yellow so they're getting so we're estimating six seven weeks but they're still nursing and they told us at the clinic that they didn't want to spay the cat until she'd stopped nursing. Well, her tummy's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so we're pretty sure she had the babies and immediately, she's a straight, straight cat, you know, and immediately got impregnated again, like within the first two weeks of having birth. Because she's getting big, and it's like, oh man, we do not. It's my fault for being nice to a kitty cat who then brought her two babies here. Because um, now she's like, home! with an air conditioner and food and I have a box inside so that if I don't want to go outside when it's raining I don't have to go outside and poop I can just poop in a box the good thing is that the clinic where we're going to take them to get spayed um, will do adoptions they'll help you with adoptions so there is that if she, if she does end up having babies before we can get her spayed and, and yes if we go get her spayed while she's pregnant, they will take the babies out. Some people look at that and go, that's cruel, that's abortion. Life isn't the way you think it is. That's all I'm going to say to that. I'm not going to get into a debate.
but um, it is what it is. Um, because putting them up for adoption doesn't guarantee a solution either. By the way, um, they will euthanize. Most places will euthanize if they can't find a home for the animal within a certain amount of time because they don't have the resources to take every single animal off the street either. That's a heavy topic. I don't want to do heavy topics on my on my show. So let's 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 move on. I grew up in livestock management, so there's there's realities to livestock management that that just hurt people's feelings, to to put it nicely. And there's no way to, you can't, you can't, there's no reason to argue about it. There are just some things in life that are the way they are. They're not, they're not happy. They're not nice. They make everybody sad. Um, it's like, um, I said I wasn't going to talk heavy stuff and here I am diving into heavy stuff again. We're, let's, let's divert. Oh, there's a Christina. There's coffee, Chris. Um, we're not watching any shows right now. Just, we don't have time. Like, Chris has been running, I mean, almost every day Chris has gone out and had to do, like, stuff while I'm here doing YouTube videos and weave in the void product productivity. She's going out and um, things like, as an example... There's no number on the house. Like there's no, we don't have a, we don't have a street number. And that's because years and years and years ago when this, when her mom had this place built, that wasn't a big deal. It was just, this was a place on the outskirts of a small town in the middle of nowhere. And the town has sort of grown up around this place. Um, many houses here, including, get this, including the clinic for my, for my doctor clinic, um, the Eames clinic here in this town doesn't have a number. Like if you go to their website and you go to their direction, it literally says S slash N, which means sin numero, which means without number, no number. So there's just, it's literally just a building on a street and it just says name of the building, name of the street, zip code, and that's it. So there's no, many places throughout this, this, this town don't have street numbers. So Chris went to the public works office, I think Friday, and they said, you're going to need this, 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 and this, you know, like you're going to need these four or five things to get your house numbered. Well, like three of those things are things where her mom was just like, well, yeah, we don't need copies of those. It's fine. <laughs> so now Chris has to try to find a way to dig up, um, records of those things so that we can get those so that we can submit those to the office of public works so that we can get a house number assigned to this place because until we can get a house number assigned to this place i can't get it on google maps which means it's going to be a nightmare to try to get anything ordered off of amazon um the locals here are fine because like um you tell them the street and they know exactly where it is so like getting pizza delivered and, and things that getting taxi drivers stuff like that that's easy but like the moving company um and um somebody else recently they've needed like three people who have showed up and delivered things have needed a gps point like they won't they just won't deliver with just a street name and like even if you give them your phone number they call you and they're like hey can you send me a gps point because that's the only way they know how to get here. Um, so that's going to... I haven't tried to order anything off Amazon yet. I'm thinking I might try to order like a $5 or something. Just to see what that experience is like. Or if it will even work. Because Amazon drivers usually, at least in Mexico City, will call um, when they're about to make the delivery and say, Are you home? Is this the right place? And it, I think maybe two or three times we've had delivery drivers who are like, Hey... Which 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 building? Where are you? You know, I'm I'm out on this corner, and a couple of Uber drivers. One, I remember a couple of Uber drivers a couple of times got got confused. So I mean, occasionally, but they'll just call, and if they know the area, which theoretically, if you're getting a local driver, they'll know the area. But you might be getting a driver from the city, who's like two hours away, and he's not going to have a clue. Um, 
yeah, so I don't know how that's going to work. So that's that's the kind of stuff that Chris has been dealing with. Getting all that taken care of. The house is pretty much... We're good to go on the house now. Um, but um, I still need to get up on the roof and fix all that. that that's just not going to happen right away, apparently, um, for various reasons. But we've got all the windows taken care of. We repainted a bunch of stuff. We've got all the electrical run, which I talked about recently. Um, we need a couple more tables for the kitchen for appliances. That'll be a work in progress. Having cats means we have an unexpected. That's going to be an unexpected expense. And animals are more expensive than I remember them being. Um, it's, it's not going to be cheap to get three cats wormed, vaccinated, and spayed and neutered. Um, which is why I don't want her to have any more babies. I'm not taking care of more babies. Like, if she has more babies, those are getting given away. Like, those will be... I'll give those to the clinic and say good luck with those, or I'll give them... I think one of the one of the nieces wants a cat, you know, so... And maybe her sister... Actually, I think her sister said no to a cat. Indira said no, right, Chris? So, um... But I think we're pretty much to the point where from here on out, it's just little by little starting to um, put things together. Um, I think that, I may have talked about this last week. The next step is they literally just inaugurated the church um, because they, they were closed down for a year and a half because of COVID. Yesterday was actually the first day that the church next door had service for like a year and a half um so it was like an inauguration um and the one of the, the guy who's been referring us to people goes to that church but he wasn't there yesterday so as soon as we get a chance to talk to him is when we're getting a contractor because i need a door oh i gotta tell you a story about this we gotta get a door put on the office we need mosquito nettings installed on the three windows that we have and we need a chicken coop built for Chris those little cats those little kittens are climbing now and I came in here the other night and Chris was like Tim Tim and I come running and the female was already up on these desks like getting ready to knock Xbox and other stuff off because she was exploring behind the monitors and all the laptops and everything and I know how she got up here because she jumped on my chair because my I, I have a towel in my chair. Um, the towel was on the floor, so I know she got up on my chair and then jumped from the chair to the... So I pulled all the chairs back away from the desk. And then as we were doing that, she ran in here and climbed up the post of one of these tables because these are wood tables. So she climbed up one of the legs and got up on the desk that way. And it was like, son of a biscuit. So um, we sort of figured out how to block the tapestry that we have hanging up we call it a tapestry but it's the big carpet thing that's our temporary door um for the ace for the ac um we've kept them out for two nights but that's a short-term solution so we got to get a door but so that's the next the next major thing for us is we got to get a carpenter um and get all that taken care of <laughs> Trying to think where to go next. We can talk weave and void stuff, I suppose. Oh, um, before I do that, the Mondays in Middle Earth series I launched, I think, between last... It came out after last week's episode. So we did the first episode on The Hobbit. I've got the first episode on Fellowship of the Ring coming out today, later on. And then the day that I'm recording this, um, I'm supposed to be meeting up with Liam from Liam's Lyceum to chat about... Um, Tolkien related stuff. I don't know if we're actually recording the episode today or if we're going to just be shooting the shit about when we're going to record the episode and kind of putting together our game plan. But um, that's fun. I, I made it all the way last night. Um, last night I was reading and we got, they were at Tom Bombadil's. I got past Tom Bombadil through the Barrow Downs into Bree, into the Prancing Pony. 
they met Strider, they went up to the room, Strider, Barlum and Butterbore, and then I'm at the point as of the last reading when Mary bursts in and he's like, Black Riders, Black Riders on the streets of Bree. And so this morning after I record this episode, I got to go take notes because I'm putting together the next episode that I'm going to record, um, which is going to cover, I think we'll cover up to the end of the next chapter, which will be, I can't remember when that chapter, I think that's when they head out, head out of Bree. I can't remember exactly when this chapter ends because it's been so long since I've read it. But that's that's the next thing on my agenda. Oh crap, we're 30 minutes in. I need to I need to move on. Um, we've been void stuff. Uh, layout is mostly done um, for the um, source book. I think the only thing I'm missing is just character art from Nathan and a handful of pieces from Chris as she continues to do vertical images. So we could have some full page shots in there. Yesterday I compiled a list. I have 25 encounters that I need to create. However, I am not going to do it the way... There's no need for me to. Um, because people can put whatever they want into here if they want, but the, the way I'm going to be doing the encounters is a much simplified version than what you would see in, like, the Lost Mine of Fendelva or something, where they've got stat blocks for every single monster and encounter. I'm not doing that. I'm giving things a very generic, this is how many hit points they have, this is their armor class, these are their types of attacks, that's it. You know, um, I might give them some basic stats, but the way I always do it just to make things easy for the campaigns is I just give everybody like 12 across the board in terms of stats, so everybody's got a plus one. Unless it's a specialty creature or a specialty boss, in which case it will have stats. So out of those 25 encounters, I just got to go through each one and, and decide. But there's like there's one encounter that has, it's 20 paladins and templars, right? It's a checkpoint. And it's, it ha I have to put it in there because if the players decide that they're going to attack that, there has to be a, a, you know, there have to be stats. But I don't need to say, like, all of these paladins need to have 13 strength, 15 dex, blah, blah. I'm just going to say it's just a bunch of paladins. They're all third level. They've got 35 hit points apiece and 17 armor class. They get one attack per round, which is this. And they get one spell attack per, you know, uh, as well that they can use. It's this. So it's a very simple stat block. But I still anticipate that's going to be all this week. This week is going to be just getting all the encounters done. Once I'm done with the encounters, which I should be done with that by the 15th or the 16th of April, I am then done with that book. Other than the insertion of more artwork and polish passes. And if I want to add anything to it, like more lore, more other things, I can. Um, but by the 15th, by mid-April, it should be done with the layout, which is two weeks ahead of schedule, which is good. We're still not going to publish ahead of schedule because I need to get all of the artwork completed and inserted before I'm ready to publish those. But we'll, we're definitely, unless there's a hiccup somewhere on the art side... Uh, my work is done in terms of getting all the layout done for now. Obviously, there will be tweaks as I add more art to the book. I'll have to adjust everything because it'll, when I insert one thing, it'll throw it off over here, and so I'll have to go through and adjust everything as we go through. But it's it's coming together. So for those of you who want to pre-order that, patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits. Those books are out in June. If you pre-order now, you can get yours when, when they come out. And then the Kickstarter is going to be probably July. Um, I'm thinking late July. We'll probably depends on when we launch the, the the books. If we launch the books on June 1st, then we might do the Kickstarter like July 15th. You know what I mean? But if we launch June 15th, then we might do like August 1st um, for the Kickstarter for the hardbacks. But uh, we're gonna do a very small Kickstarter. I originally thought like a $5,000 one. We might just do like a $2,500 one because I don't know how many people are gonna want to buy copies. But realistically, if we could sell 50 copies. Um, that's all I care about. I'm not, the Kickstarter is not to make a profit. If it makes a profit, cool. But it's mostly just to say, how many of you want hardback books? Do you want hardback books? Cool. Here's the Kickstarter for the hardback books. 
And if we hit those numbers, cool. We will, we will make some money off of a Kickstarter, any Kickstarter we do, but it's not a lot. Um, you know, without diving into details, if, if I run a $2,500 Kickstarter, you know, there might be, and it just honestly it depends on prints and everything else, but there could be 300 you know, a few, a few hundred dollars of profit, potentially, which basically just covers my time. Well, I split it with my brother, but it covers our time for running the campaign and and putting all the campaign together and, and handling all the logistics of getting all the print stuff taken care of and shipped and all that good stuff. So it just, we're not making minimum wage, baby. I, you know, it's, it's, we're getting paid, but we're not getting paid, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, but that's all coming together. We did that live stream last week for the uh, point and click game, uh, which is cool. Showed an update, so you haven't watched that. Make sure to watch that. I don't know. This week is mostly going to be just um, seeing if we can't get a... Well, Chris is going to be working on public works stuff this week to try to get our house numbered. Um, we're waiting on the final paperwork for the house, um, which is through the federal government, so that just takes time. But... Um, that's all theoretically going to get taken care of this week. And then getting a carpenter. That's the next step here. And then um, getting our, our long-term long secondary solution set up for Sunday night streams. Um, which I'm pretty sure what that's going to be is a um, the, the cell phone company has a, a 4G hotspot modem um, that you can rent. Uh, and it's, it's very inexpensive. I think what we need would be 20 bucks a month or something. And it's just for Sunday nights. Cause I don't really need to stream the rest of the week. Um, I'm, I like doing my streams in the, in the mornings, as most people know, my coffee streams also in the afternoons and they're not the, our backwoods internet is not capping us until 7:30 at night. 7.30 at night, I'm happy to not be on the computer. I'm happy to be in bed reading with a book, um, doing video production, all that other stuff at nighttime. So that's not going to, it's not going to affect me one way or the other, other than the convenience factor of being like, hey, I want to go, you know, oh, I can't upload anything from 7.30 at night onwards. And it is what it is. So we'll see. Onwards and upwards. I keep saying, you know, having a, paid for house makes up for all those things you know pros and cons not having a mortgage is is and no longer having rent is a big thing all right folks i need to go look at getting some breakfast in me and see what's up with the cats take a bio and then i'm probably gonna go play some lotro i don't know if i'm gonna stream this morning though but i'm definitely gonna play a little bit see you next time everybody stay safe